Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Riri PV TV Weekly with the most important news out of the PV industry summarized for you. Thank you for clicking in. After power failures in India, Goldman Sachs predicts fall of brick countries. This week's record power cuts in India with around 600 million people affected were a symbol of the collapse of the emerging countries. To this conclusion comes Jim O'Neill of Goldman Sachs Asset Management. The break at development of the evolving world is globally worse than current crisis in the Eurozone, says financial expert O'Neill. In particular, the lack of infrastructure in the BRIC countries Brazil, Russia, India and China is responsible for the sharp decline of the economy. In particular, there is a lack of transportation routes such as roads and ports. Also, the increasing demand for energy in these countries indicates a problem. The BRIC countries alone consume about one-third of the global energy. Therefore, many experts quite expected the Indian collapse since the hunger for energy of the subcontinent had long exceeded the supply. But not only the BRIC countries, the topic of energy supply raises some questions. Despite rising electricity demand, the photovoltaic industry struggles. The wave of bankruptcies in the solar industry seems to be endless and investors lose their money. Some of the most important German solar companies combined have lost more than $25 billion at the stock exchange. The crisis doesn't affect the most potential solar enterprises in China as much because the Chinese government is promoting the construction of local solar projects. This in turn affects and concerns, for example, the German companies. In particular, the collapse of prices for solar modules due to competition from China is responsible for the losses. However, many errors are also homemade. For example, have German companies relied for years on state funding, which is now over, and have in the meantime forgotten to develop new products. But there are also good news from the solar industry. It seems that the world's largest photovoltaic manufacturer, Early K Solar, is saved. The Chinese company with about 3 billion US dollars in debt gets financial support from the state-owned Chinese copper producer Jiangxi Copper. The Chinese government is apparently trying everything to protect their Chinese solar companies abroad from the crisis. This seems to work. By all means, climbed the stock market value of LDK Solar a day after the announcement of the rescue operation by 8.6% to 1.38 US dollars. The Dresden based SolarWatt Corporation has submitted the restructuring plan prepared by restoration experts on time at the district court in Dresden. Thus, the manufacturer of photovoltaic modules and systems made a giant step toward its remediation while setting the curse for the future of the company. The plan includes in particular preserving 337 of the 435 jobs. Increase of photovoltaic installations in the United Kingdom. The PV extension in the UK reached its peak before the reduction of the feed-in tariffs on August 1st. After that, the solar feed-in compensations for photovoltaic plants with a rated capacity of less than 4 kW decreased from 21 to 16 British pence per kilowatt hour. In addition, the guaranteed payment periods have been shortened from 25 to 20 years. However, according to the British solar trade, photovoltaics remain, in spite of the reduction, a worthwhile investment. Photovoltaic prices collapse because of trade dispute. According to the research company Trendforce, the demand for photovoltaic products in August 2012 has fallen sharply and the prices have dropped quickly. This is the result of the still ongoing trade disputes with the US and pending trade complaints of the EU and China. The market research company reports the largest drops were in prices in solar cells. Unit prices for multi- and monocrystalline silicon solar cells decreased by 5.27% to 1.74 or 1.95 US dollars. Also, excess inventories in the second quarters were partly responsible. 
Chinese government responds to EU trade case. The Chinese Ministry of Commerce has responded to the EU anti-dumping trade case against Chinese photovoltaic manufacturers. It claimed that the aggressive pricing of Chinese modules is a result of cost reduction, economies of scale and low polysilicon prices and not of price dumping. Repeating an argument often made by European equipment suppliers, the Chinese Ministry also noted that Chinese manufacturers have employed high-level equipment from the US and EU to realize these economies of scale. It also pointed out that downstream industries have been created in the EU on the back of falling photovoltaic prices. Consolidated Edison buys 92 megawatt of PV plants in California. A subsidiary of Consolidated Edison Incorporate in New York has completed the acquisition of two solar photovoltaic projects totaling 92 megawatt in California from a subsidiary of the Chinese GCL Poly Energy Holdings Limited. The two projects are located in Alpha to Lair County and scheduled for commissioning in the fourth quarter of 2012. Consolidated Edison Development will own and operate the both plants and sell the electricity generated to Pacific Gas and Electric Company on a 25 years PPA. Researchers discover silicon as alternate for laminating solar modules. U.S. Fraunhofer researchers are now studying materials that can keep solar cells safe from environmental influence in order to make photovoltaic modules last longer. They believe that silicon could be the answer. Silicon, which is neither an organic polymer nor an inorganic crystal, though related to both, is a highly unusual substance. PV modules are encapsulated with silicons but are not used for the lamination of solar modules. Presently, ethyl vinyl acetate or EVA is used for the purpose. SunTech investigates security interest in connection with GSF. The Chinese manufacturer of photovoltaics, SunTech, announced on Tuesday that the company is conducting an investigation into a security interest SunTech received in the connection with its investment in the Global Solar Fund, in short GSF, from Luxembourg. Based on recent review and inquiries, SunTech suspects that the collateral, which was supposedly provided by Germany, related to the security interests may not have existed and the company may have been victim of a fraud. Trina Solar reduces its sales forecast. The Chinese solar manufacturer China Solar has significantly lowered its expectations for the second quarter of 2012. Trina Solar expects that its sales will reach the second quarter a total of 390 to 420 megawatt. Previously, 500 to 520 megawatt were expected. For the whole year 2012, the company will not specify its outlook just yet. Tokelau, world's first 100% photovoltaic area. The South Pacific territory of Tokelau is set to become the first territory to have its electricity provided only by photovoltaics. The archipelago, which has an area of 10 square kilometers and hosts 1,400 people, is the dependent territory of New Zealand. Tokelau comprises of three atolls in the South Pacific. Photovoltaic arrays have currently been installed to one island and the installation of another two photovoltaic systems will be complete by October. Due to the island's location of the installation, they will have to be able to withstand cyclone force winds up to 140 miles per hour. As far as the news for this week, next Friday we'll be back for you as usual on our website. If you're curious, Please click in. Until then, have a nice time. See you and goodbye.